All right. Some some would say that, you know, you're not supposed to judge. Some people in faulty Christina and faulty Christianity or in, in Christian thinking would say that, uh, well, whoever I and I to judge, and then they will go forward and say that we're not to judge, like leave all judgment to God. But we as his children, as his sons and his daughters, we know differently. Yes, Christ said, do not condemn. There's a difference in judging against and judging in favor of. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's confused, that's lost in translation. And I think it's a very interesting subject matter and we're in this particular um, Torah portion right here. I don't know if you can see this right here all well, right? We're in this particular Torah portion right here, um, 48, right? The Torah portion 48, which is known as Ferrajoch, uh, Ferrajoch. And we encourage you all to take a, a listen to our uh, Sabbath call conferencing where we address this particular issue, um, at least the Torah portion um, 48 part 1 right part 1 we broke down that there are at least 10 different parts to it in fact um, what is the, um, the Devarim is the Devarim over there Devarim. Devarim these are the words these are the words now let's touch on judging, and you know when we say about judge, we say, well, we can't judge. You, that's, that's faulty Christianity. I think faulty Christianity because we can point to the same Bible where we're told in the New Testament to judge. That 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 what do we think? We're not able to judge even these least matters. You understand these least matters? And from what we judge, we judge that Ethiopia, Ethiopia is in need of repentance and that Ethiopians at home and abroad even though we may be a another generation we are not that generation even this generation of Ethiopians who are perhaps mourning for the loss of uh, um, the Archbishop Paul Loss right and for the loss of the Prime Minister Melis Zanawi they're not looking at the big picture you know what I'm saying? They're not looking at what they have done. And, and this is the Kabbalistic, the ritualistic killing of the king and the crucifixion of Negus and Neges on this world stage. And as of yet, there's not one who is in uh, religious authority who has truly pointed to the reason from God's word among the Ethiopians at home and abroad. And that's a shame. That is a real shame, my brothers and sisters. But we're going to point to this right here. we got a couple of minutes in this vid. We're still in show, show 15. Show 15, where it says, Justice, justice you shall pursue. We shall pursue, pursue or follow. Right? True, right? True judgment. What is a true judgment? So it's not seeking to judge against this Ethiopian generation because I and I is Rastafarian. I and I love his majesty. But no, look at the facts. And looking at the facts of the matter, and, and this has come to mind more than once, and we've spoken on this, we wrote on this. We even see that um, Melis uh, Zanawi's government must have adopted some of what we had said and published on the Internet and had sent in other correspondence over the years since he was in um, office, you know what I'm saying? But still, never giving credit where credit is due. Never giving credit to his imperial majesty. So let's look at when, when um, I think Solomon, Solomon's prayer of dedication. You know what I'm Do you recall uh, Solomon's uh, prayer of dedication? And he spoke about this people. He said that if this people, right, if this people which are called by my name. In fact, it's actually in chapter 7, chapter 7 of 2 
Chronicles, Old Testament, Second Chronicles, Old Testament. So we're going to connect this right here in this particular Torah portion in Devarim, in Devarim, in this particular Torah portion, um, with this repentance, with the Ethiopian repentance. And if you go on the internet and look up Ethiopian repentance, um, you can just kind of give thanks. Line of Judah Society, right? Line of Judah Society or LOJ Society or, or even Ras uh, Iodonis, I A D O N I S. It should come up. You understand? It's, it's, it's an old publication, an old article that we published. We saw it, it's still out there. You understand? The Ethiopian repentance. Because we have to look at what has happened. Let's look at the true view, right? The betrayal. You see right here the betrayal of Ethiopia. See His Majesty and, and, and Kennedy. See His Majesty and Eisenhower. You understand? You see His Majesty and Roosevelt. This book by a native um, Ethiopian who, who, who tells the truth. He reveals more of the truth of, of what went on when they bit the hand that fed them. You understand when they bit the hand of the elect of God, not recognizing that in doing so was a violation of the covenant, of this holy covenant, this, this Al Kidan covenant. They take pride in quote Ethiopia and Ethiopia's exoticness, but they have they have they have missed the point. This is what we mean by careless. The careless Ethiopian. Woe to the careless Ethiopians. Because you're not recognizing who you be, you understand, and what Ethiopia is to the Almighty, and who His Imperial Majesty is, who He was, and who He will be. You understand? He who is who He is. He who be who He be. His Imperial Majesty. So let's look at this. Just lay a foundation, a foundation to this. So second. Um, Chronicles, and let's get it by Marinya in Amharic as well, so we can uh, we can fact, you know, fact check it, fact check uh, King James, you understand, King Jacob, you understand, we can um, deal with the sin of Jacob, you understand, the mistranslations in the King James uh, version. So we're going to uh, second um, second uh, Chronicles. Which Bamarinya is Metase uh, Zena Zena Mewa'il Kale'it 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 Mi'raf Mi'raf Mindino Mi'raf Sabat Mi'raf Sabat Chapter 7. All right, and we're reading from the Metaf Kedus, the authorized um, 1961 revised Amharic Bible. or we call his imperial majesty's bible and its rightful name the uh, metaf kedus or the book of the seven seals right the bible of his imperial majesty all right so and, and this Torah portion also speaks about concerning a king and concerning kingship and it's important for us to read this particular Torah portion from devarim from devarim and that's uh um deuteronomy Deuteronomy, so this is the 48th, the 48th Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 16, verse 18 to chapter 21, verse 9. So in chapter 17, it speaks on concerning a king. You understand that if we as the Beit Israel and the covenant people, you understand, and the holy Ethiopians, if we have a king or choose a king, there is a, a, a divine qualification for kingship. And when we read that, we see how his imperial majesty, Kedamawi Haile Shalasi, Haile Shalasi the first, how he fulfilled that. You understand? We know we cannot change the blame Haile Selassie the first crowd. There's the blame Haile Selassie the first crowd out there of the ones who are really too far gone. You understand? We just say that may Jah, if he will, have mercy on their soul. But there are many Ethiopians who have been kept in the dark. You know, in a state of ignorance, or who are, who are just beginning to see the big picture. So this is for you, brothers and sisters. So this parasha here provides a constitution, the constitution of our divine heritage, a basic societal structure for the Beta Israel, and this means for the holy Ethiopian people. Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, 
like you say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Now, um, Yehuda Yikadem, Ethiopia Tikadem. Ao, ao. The Parsha sets out rules for magistrates or judges, so Rajoch, right? Kings, Levites, prophets, cities of refuge, witnesses, war, landmarks, and the, 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 the found corpse, if there should be found a, an, an, an unaccounted for dead body. All right, so let's get into the Ethiopian repentance, and and this is a this is a good time, whether they hear or whether they forbear. Some might hear this message, and it might touch their heart. They might recognize the big picture, and the Holy Spirit will give them light and and see in this darkness of what Ethiopia is going through right now. It's in a very very precarious position. So pray for the peace of Ethiopia, of holy Ethiopia, my brothers and sisters at home and abroad. So let's get into this. Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7, we're going to begin from verse 12. Here Yahweh appears to Solomon. So at this particular point, Yahweh, or Jehovah if you please, appears to Solomon. Then it has First Kings chapter 9 verses one to nine as a as a as a, as a companion scripture to study. But we're going to read from right here in Second uh, Chronicles chapter seven. And those reading in them heart, that's Metafe Zena Mawail Mitraf Mawail Kalid second right Mitraf Sabat Kuter Asara Ulet or Asara Ulet, if you please. All right. And then below, and it says, And the Lord, Yahweh, he who be who he be, and the king of kings appeared to Solomon, Solomon by night, and said to him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. So it is... Jah, it is God, it is it is He and He alone who chooses. Right? As the Son said, the Father is greater than me. Alright? So it is the Father, the Father God, Ab, that chose. That chose Israel and that chose Kidistitu Ethiopia, holy Ethiopia, our African Zion. Verse 13, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, does that sound familiar? Ye Etopiawianoch, Nante, Etopiawianoch Hulu, does it sound familiar to you? Yova, it sounds familiar to us, it sounds like the Ethiopian famine. It sounds like what led up to the the betrayal, right, the betrayal of his imperial majesty. Sounds just like that, my brothers and sisters. All right? That's why when Kedamawi Haila Shalasi, when when Ababa John Hoy, when he said, um, who causes famine? He asked them, who causes famine? Is it God or is it man? They did not answer him. It reminded me of when yes was Christos when he was like, well, by whose authority do you do all these things? And so he said, well, let me ask you a question. If you answer my question, I'll answer your question. So he said, he said, John the Baptist. You understand, by whose authority? Was it by his own or was it by God? Did God send him? You understand? Or, or, or is it men and people that made him something? By whose authority? And they went, they hedged their bets. This is what happened in the Kabbalistic, the Illuminati derg, you understand, ritual, killing of the king, in, in other words, this, this misappropriation of power, you understand, this misappropriation of power, it says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, so in the Ethiopian famine, what happened? What happened in the Ethiopian famine? There was no rain, isn't that correct? It, it, the rain was off for many years. Or for for a year or so, and right, so that heavens were shut up, 
there was no rain. Or, or, on the other hand, Belazia, or if I command the locusts, the Anbetauch, right? The locusts to devour the land. Or, if I send pestilence, you know, send pestilence, even this, this, this whole HIV and AIDS thing, it's another pestilence, right? Or if I send pestilence, or Ebola, right? All these are pestilences among my people, among my people. This is why in Amos 9 and 7 it says, aren't you like unto the children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel. So here with uh, Negusha Solomon, right, with King Solomon, Yahweh, he who is who he is, he who be who he be, in revelation to I and I, that is his imperial majesty. That's the king of kings. The overstand. Remember what happened to kingship and Saul before Saul, who was king? Before Saul, who was king of the base of Israel? God was king. The overstand. God is the king of kings. All right? So right here it says in verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, overstand that, which my people, so... Here, Yahweh identifies with his people. You understand? So, as they are, so am I. You understand? Is what God is saying. They are called by my name. You understand? Shall humble themselves and pray, and pray, and seek my face. Seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear, will he shema from heaven and will forgive their chatiyat, and will forgive their sin, their trespass, that great transgression against the king of kings, the creeping satanic coup against his imperial majesty, against his divine majesty, and will heal their land. So all of these other ways they've tried, an gizeh what a communism, socialism, they like gizeh, or the capitalism, you understand? One time they go to communism, now they went to, or socialism, if you please. Now they went to what? They went to capitalism or really republicanism. That's why that vid that I showed previously in the video, the Kabbalistic uh, ritual murder of the King of Kings, you understand? Um, question mark. We, the video that we linked and the Orthodox priest, you got to check that out for yourself while it's still up there on YouTube. You know, and you'll see it in the first part of the video. It's named The Kabbalistic Ritual um, Murder of the King. So you can look it up on the YouTubes. And, I mean, really sit back and check it out. And when you're checking it out, look at Ethiopia. Just, just see if you can see Ethiopia. You can see the conspiracy that happened. You understand? That, that, that conspiracy is ongoing. So here in verse 14 it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked, or as Rastafari would say, weak-hearted ways, then will I hear. Then will he hear from heaven and will forgive. He will forgive their sin. Egeziah here will forgive Ethiopia if Ethiopia, you understand that people called by his name. I mean, look at their names. Such among the, the Orthodox and the Christianos, their, their names are the names of God. Understand that. Of, of the family of God. Understand that. If they shall humble themselves instead of grumbling amongst themselves, and hating on his majesty and blaming his majesty first. No, you are to blame. You know what I'm Because you're continuing in the sin of your ancestors. You understand? Whether they, they were active in conspiracy against his majesty or were inactive in passivity, or we call it pussy city, you understand? Know against, in other words, they didn't stand up. Right? They didn't stand up. They, stand, they stood down. And notice... Where did that conspiracy came from? From the bodyguard. Now think about this. In heaven there was a conspiracy. Who was it? It was that anointed, that what? Anointed 
Remember, anointing Krishna, Christian, that anointed cherub. The cherub, if you read in the scripture, are likened to the bodyguard of Egeziahir, the bodyguard of Yahweh, the cherub. So it's one of the anointed. Remember, anointed is, is, is christened. The same word, or Messiah. You understand? That cherub, that fallen cherub who human beings call Lucifer and Satan and Diablos and the old dragon that His Majesty warned them about in 1941, Macy's, you know, you understand, but they, they didn't heed, they didn't hear, you know what I'm saying, they didn't hear. Now, Ecclesiastes here, do not hear you. Look, look at the situation, you know what I'm saying, take a real stock of the situation. Humble themselves. Let's, let's, let's look at this. First it says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, at verse 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, right, one, and pray, two, right, and seek my face, three, and turn from their wicked ways, four. You see that four? That four, that four is the mezcal. That four is the cross, right? That four is the mezcal, all right? You're over. The four is like that cross, or... We can say the four days between the announcement of their archbishop, Paul Loss, right, his death, and four days later, Melis Zenawi. Notice the name, Zenawi. Where are we at? We're in Chronicles. Bamarinya Metzhafe Zena. You understand? Um, Zenawi. You understand? Zenawi. Zenawi. You. You understand? Well, these, these, these are the days of your life. You understand? Let it not be, let it not cut off your eternal life through, through great transgression and, and disobedience. You can't say you haven't heard. That's why all of the brothers and sisters in Rastafari really understand this message and ask the Father, Abba, in the name of Geta Yesus, what should I do? How can I also be a part of putting out this word? In what way may I be most effective? You understand? In the establishment of the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ, and the restoration of the divine monarchy. You understand? The monarchy is the key. So, with that said, he says, Well, then I will hear. Then he will hear. You understand? Then he will hear from heaven. And will what? Forgive. Forgive their sin. Forgive I and I sin. The Ethiopians at home. Sin. The Ethiopians abroad, our ancestors, the careless Afro Americans and West Indians and other black folks, you know what I'm saying, who knew His Majesty. You know what I'm saying? But instead they looked for, they went after Baal and Balaam, you know what I'm saying, to become an owner in Babylon society and turn their backs on the Lion of Judah's society. All right? So, and it says, then we'll heal, we'll heal their land. So these things cannot be done by a special UN project. These things cannot be done by turning to the Gentiles. I mean, you could, you, can't even, you could turn to the aliens and extraterrestrials. They cannot do anything about this either. It's beyond their authority, and hence it's beyond their power. It's beyond their ability, right? Verse 15, it says, Now my eyes shall be open. Then his eyes will be open." And mine ears attend to the tzelot, the tzelot, the prayer that is made in this place, the prayers that are made in that.